The world was once a thriving and advanced civilization, with people living in harmony and technological advancements reaching new heights every day. But all of that was soon to change. As tensions between nations rose, a series of nuclear wars broke out, engulfing the planet in a fiery inferno. The skies were filled with ash and debris, and the land was left scorched and barren. In the aftermath of the destruction, only a few scattered survivors remained. They were forced to flee to the wastelands, where they struggled to survive in a harsh and unforgiving environment. The oldest and wisest among them, who came to be known as the Council of Elders, they established a system of laws and order to prevent the descent into chaos and anarchy. As the communities grew and prospered, the Council of Elders realized that they needed help to manage the growing population they decided to appoint a group of leaders known as captains. The captains were chosen for their strength, courage, and wisdom, and they quickly proved themselves to be valuable assets to the rebuilding effort. On Post Apo Builder is a very interesting base building survival game that has a lot to do with Mad Max and a game that you may have seen recently on the channel called Homeseek. Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here. And yeah, about two years ago, we took a look at the tutorial for this game, which was kind of a demo on Steam. And now, as of August 2nd, 2023, this game now has a public playtest that everyone can request access to to play the first couple of missions. Uh, apparently, according to the developers, it should be coming out around two months from now. So between now and then, upon its release, we should have some more improvements to the game. And there's some really interesting combat systems to this game. I recently live-streamed it and wanted to showcase a little bit more to this one for you you guys so hey join raptoria here today become a member click or tap that join button subscribe now to the channel smash the like button so other people can find this game and this video and let's jump in to our uh, first video look at post apo builder we're gonna go build a bridge between a destroyed derelict boat and build defenses like you see in the background we can be attacked by bandits we can trade we can do all sorts of things so let's check out all the changes between two years ago and today let's go We have lost contact with the Ford Excavation Camp. The Council of Elders sends you on a rescue mission. Locate the missing survivors and find out what happened to the captain. Prepare for the expedition. Establish a proper base camp. Take advantage of the buildings and vehicle left behind. Then go in pursuit after the raiders. Prepare the bridge and prepare the mining station at the abandoned ship. Gather fuel supplies and prepare a reserve of provisions and parts necessary for the expedition. Good luck. The Council of Elders is counting on you. All right, let's begin. So there's a few things that are a little misleading from that intro. From our experience so far through the live stream, there doesn't seem to be any sort of fuel or way to create fuel on the map so far. So I think we'll need to go out on some expeditions in order to find fuel and then be able to build more vehicles. So this game actually allows us to build vehicles like in Mad Max. If we click on the big workshop here, we can open the hangar. We can make all sorts of different vehicles, including scout vehicles, which are essentially like a mini bike with like uh, three-wheeler tires on it and a wheelbarrow. We can also build like buggies and assault cars and uh, big old trucks that have like grenade launchers on board and a taxi that looks armored and crazy cool. I love it. All these vehicles also consume different amounts of fuel, so we're going to have to start small in order to then work our way to the world map. Oh, it looks like there's actually some oil here now. Wait a minute. Did, <laughs> ah, I think the developers just updated the uh, game. Oh, this wasn't here before. Ah, yes, okay. So when we were playing this in the live stream, there was no way to get fuel in the game, but now it looks like there's a way to actually build scaffolding here in order to expand our empire or whatnot. So that looks to be a great update. Cool. 
So if you'd seen me play previously, we were having some difficulty there. It looks like they patched that in, so that's fantastic. All right. First and foremost, we have our survivors around our camp. We can tell them to go work at this warehouse. They'll be able to build things from there. But we do need to get some materials in order to build some tents. So we're going to go ahead and have six people immediately start uh, working over there. And it kind of works like Frostpunk that way, where there's like little resource piles around. And there's a short uh, work day where people will only work during the days. But we're going to go ahead and press tab here and bring up some tents. We have uh, about 12 people in the camp. More people will show up through the gate over here. So... Uh, you know, this is where we could be attacked, but traders can also show up here and additional survivors. But we won't be able to recruit them until we start making some more decrees. So one of the things that we're going to do, and one of the best early decrees, is skillful collectors, which allows us to carry more things by two. So each of our survivors can do a lot more gathering. By the way, listen to this music. Does that not make you think of Home Depot? Come on in to deal in post-apocalyptic dealing days down at the Home Depot. Save money on scaffolding and corrugated steel and rusted nails. Come on down today. Yeah, I thought so too. Anyway, we're going to build some tents here. It looks like we're not able to build on the road. And building here is a little tricky because I think eventually vehicles are supposed to path, pass through here. So the pathing is kind of like blocked as well. But we can go ahead and salvage things like cars and containers and pretty much everything can be used and reused in order to then get things like metal or parts or chemicals or whatnot. We're going to get everybody on first gathering materials so that way we can build some tents. And you can already see our builder hard at work at building one of the first tents. We're going to build more than just these two. But uh, first and foremost, we've got to have everybody gathering. So we'll try not to pause. We will be skipping through parts of this video as well as it could take multiple hours to get through each of these missions. And I do like how it's set up. It does feel a little bit like Frostpunk, but we do get to go to multiple locations. So it's not like we're going to just be staying in one part of the map. There'll be many different maps with many different challenges. Some will probably feature bandits that'll try to raid us more frequently and aggressively. Others perhaps will have shortages of water and food, and that'll be a struggle. And then maybe there'll be maps where it's all about trading and abundance is here. Hey, check that out. We got some deer that have mutated. Yeah, looks like they've uh, got two heads. Fun. We can actually hunt them too, so hunting in this game is feasible farming, and trading for food is also an opportunity for additional resources. Water is going to be incredibly important here though, so that's why I've got all of our people gathering uh, wood first to see if we can get all these tents built. So we got two wood piles here and there, and then we're going to get on water. We got a little bit of water, enough to kind of save us for like a day, but I want to do shelter first so we don't have to worry about that, and that'll bring morale up a little bit. Now this is great. At nighttime they sound the alarm and I love the lighting at night. All of the tents look really cool with the lanterns in it and people even walk around with a lantern too. So kind of kudos to the devs for being one of the first games where I've seen people actually just carry lighting on them. Usually you have to build like uh, torches or something on a pathway in order to get that. Okay, so it's the end of our first day. No one's working anymore. We're going to go ahead and take a few people off of the lumber piles. We're going to go down there and there. Alright, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and gather about four people on wood, and we're going to try to get a few more people on what would be metal. So we've got some metal here. This large container will give us some, so they don't have to go too far. Not only, again, do the piles provide iron, which is way over here, but the containers and a few other things do. So be on the lookout for that so they don't have to walk as far, because the transfer time, it will take a lot longer to gather materials because they're further away. That's actually a pretty big factor in this game, I've found out so far. So we're going to go ahead and do a few people on wood and a few people on uh, metal. And then we're going to have somebody building and somebody then gathering food. So we're going to get a little bit of food for tomorrow. Water's going to struggle, but now that we're going to gather uh, metal, we should be able to then build ourselves the small pump. Now, ideally, we want to get our HQ to Tier 2, the Tent of Omni Science. If we upgrade this to Tier 2, we'll be able to build water pumps, which, again, will take even more resources. But eventually, people will show up at the gate. So after the next decree is allowed, uh, which is like the Book of Laws from uh, Frostpunk, we're going to go ahead and go with the, uh, we're going to go goods with the wasteland and then openness to newcomers so we can get more recruits and get more things done. Alright, we have the option now to build a small pump. Fantastic. Let's build that. Plop that down. Doesn't give us much water, but it'll keep everybody alive for a little bit. And eventually we'll have to build greenhouses and more water will be important because water will equal food from the greenhouses. We can also, of course, grow bugs if we want to and we can also do a hunter's tent as well which is going to be a good way to start that but we can actually get a bonus boost pretty early for the um 
for the uh, hunter's or the omni science tent that will boost the hunter's tent to give us a little bit more meat uh, and that'll be a pretty easy way to do that but the farm will give us even more I think with just the same amount of water so and the farms do give quite a bit of food constantly as where the uh, hunting might actually come to an end I haven't yet tested it because I think there might be a finite a number of resources from the deer but we'll find that out but farming pretty easy and of course just takes a little bit of water and they go hand in hand very nicely additionally we can build a kitchen so water from the windmills and food from the farms can then be put into the kitchen to also make meals for our expeditions one thing i didn't mention is that these actual expeditions once we make the vehicles we can open up the expedition center and this gives us a tutorial to basically tell us that this center allows us to go out on missions anywhere on the map we have to bring particular vehicles with us and we also need to bring supplies for those expeditions so things like food and uh, fuel and maybe escape kits which allow them to it's like nitro it allows them to escape the battle kind of like an auto win and we can also build fuel at the refinery but we're not able to do that just yet uh, because this mission is supposed to be that we're out looking for fuel but we're lucky to have found this like oil tanker so i think it's implied that and this i don't think is an oil tanker because there's giant containers and stuff on it but it could be something where this is full of fuel from other people who tried to settle here and store fuel or perhaps the fuel tanks themselves still have a lot of fuel in them or there's some sort of way to get the crude oil and then eventually refine it by going to the expedition map and unlocking new that uh, fuel center. Things may have changed from the last time we played per the developers watching and getting some feedback. All right, we're going to open up trade goods from the wasteland, so we'll have traders that can come in from time to time. But the ultimate goal is this, the openness to newcomers. More people to do more work means that we can be more productive. And um, this is a game that happens day by day, so you can already see we're heading towards day two. And so there's not really going to be much in terms of childbirth or anything of that nature. I'm gonna go ahead and try to build another water pump. Try to build it somewhere, maybe over here. That's a good spot. And then after this, we're gonna to try to do windmills, so long as we get a certain number of people. Now, different numbers of people will uh, show up and ask for different amounts of supplies. And so maybe a group of three will ask for 30 water or a group of seven will ask for 70 water. There are ways to accept only some of the group, but it'll lower happiness. There's also like survivors, uh, kind of like natives of these lands that are like more primitive. And uh, you can kind of trade with them in order to either kill them off or and take their stuff or have them like recruit them and have them join you. All right, we have 10 days to go on our first expedition and uh, we have to also build a bridge. So we can get to the other side here and there's more resources like trees, scrap, food, but we're just going to try to maximize on this side first. All right, looks like we've got a ton of wood. If we do not build additional storage for wood and things which we can at the moment we will actually lose those resources so i think it's going to be a good thing for us to build a few more homes for people who will show up we'll do that in advance kind of prepping we're going to go ahead and build a couple tents There we go. We'll start with two. That should give us, uh, I think it's three per tent. And there might be ways to upgrade the tents to be able to have more. People are thirsty. Very thirsty. They'll come right over to the wells and get a drink. We can also build those storage buildings inside of our camp. So food and uh, water can be stored inside the camp. And the kitchen will be where people eventually start to go to. So we can have them maybe go closer to their homes. We can build the kitchen closer to there and see how it all works out. All right, tomorrow we're going to build a lot more buildings. We're going to get a lot more things gathered up. And we're going to see if we can also do another uh, Book of Laws decree in about 13 hours. We should be good there. So it shouldn't be too much longer. More of that Home Depot music, baby. Let's go. I love it. I can't I can't unhear it now. I really can't. All right, we're gathering the rest of the wood. And we're ga uh, gathering as much scrap as we can, too. We need 150 to upgrade the Omni Science Tent to Tier 2, and that should begin everything. Let's speed up. Oh, it says work time there. It should actually say rest time or free time. I don't see anybody actually working yet. They, I think, start their days at about 6. Of course, we can adjust that, too. There are Book of Law decrees that we can make that change that as well. Resources spot depleted. All right, let's go ahead and try to get to 100 food now. So a few people are no longer working on the wood. 
I'm going to try to get people solely on food now. We need to get that uh, metal up because we might build another well, but I think we're okay now for what we've got going on. All right, pressing tab again. We could do a big tent. Big tent will just give us a debuff to happiness. Happiness is right up here underneath the water. There will be random events that pop up just like they do in Frostpunk, and there will be things like people just kind of being mischievous and bringing everybody's happiness down because they're just dealing stuff from people to uh, finding stash and uh, caches out in the forest or the woods and bunkers and things like that. There'll be food and extra things you can do to get that. All right, more resources depleted. We can manage our expeditions and go to that unknown place shortly. It's going to take us a little bit of time to get to that point, but we should be there soon. All right, anybody else ready to gather food? Definitely do that. We've now got the food we need. Let's advance to the next level. Three hours for more decrees. But now we can build new buildings. So we've got access to being able to store resources. We also have access to that water windmill. And I'm going to immediately start with that. I'm going to start building those windmills right away. I'm going to try to build those over here. Right on the edge of the cliff. It doesn't really matter where you put them. But I do like to put them out of the way in kind of a cluster. So that way they can all be together. And I just know where to go where I can find space quickly to build those. Okay. Lots of supplies coming in. A little bit more water needed. Luckily we're building what we need to there. Looks like all that metal is no longer being gathered. Because the container is gone. I'm going to go ahead and put a few people on that. And I'm going to put a few people here on construction. And see if we can build ourselves... A so two things that are very important here the scrap collector can go around and gather chemicals parts and metal and the lumberjack can actually cut down trees from the forest so this is not renewable but it is a source that has way more uh, resources and of course the scrap collector can pretty much gather anything but also you can have regular citizens help to gather that stuff alright let's try to get more helping hands here cool so openness to newcomers now now there's other things here like cannibal, uh, cannibalism. We also have op options to gather water from people's bodies. Uh, I think some sort of weird way of drinking their sweat or something like that. There's some pretty, uh, there's some pretty heinous stuff in this game actually. So, uh, you know, there's better butchering and ways to. Uh, there's good things and bad things. Punishment rings. We got party time. The dollhouse. Water from people. If pumps can't handle it, use people. They have a lot of water in themselves. Yeah. So, uh, think of that as you will. Resources spot depleted. All right, more resources being depleted. Go ahead and put more people on scrap gathering. It looks like we're running out of food rather quickly, but that's okay. We got quite a bit of food in storage, and it's pretty easy to store food, too. Granary doesn't cost too much, and I think our farms will be producing quite a bit of food shortly. I'm going to go ahead and build a granary if we can. Actually, food will be eaten tonight, and it'll go down quite quickly. It'll go up because they're coming back from their shift and go down when they actually have their meals. All right, let's speed up time again. Oh, a doormat thief. Let's glue those down and get that happiness back up. Or... Yeah, let's do that. It'll cost us some chemicals, but that's okay. Now, we might have more survivors coming, so I'm going to... They could approach at any time at the gate. So I'm going to build another windmill to see if we can get the numbers up. People found an old grave. Dig it out. Dig it out and dismantle. Leave it in place. Or respect. Well, we need materials, so it's going to hurt their happiness quite a bit, but we're going to, we're going to dig that up. Because we are desperate for survival. We need all the pieces and parts we can get. A little bit more food. Oh, we got quite a bit of food remaining out there to be able to gather. Can we do resources storage? No, we do have a depot for everything, though. The ability to store chemicals, parts, metal, wood, and then, of course, our two collecting units. By now, people should have shown up. They must have debuffed the uh, rate of people arriving at the camp. But it could also be based on the scenario, too, at how far you've gotten in the main goals, such as sending out the expedition and uh, building the bridge. We've got plenty of time, though, plenty of time. A week in this game, it may as well just be like a month uh, to get a small building project done like the bridge. So we're going to build our basic infrastructure first and have our colony up and running 
and then start doing the bridge, which will give us access to even more parts across the other side of the ravine here where the ship has uh, been destroyed. Got to say, I really like the look of this game. I think there's a lot of nice detail here, a lot of different grass types and, you know, debris around like cinder block, plastic, wood, just scrap everywhere, things just littered vehicles here and there. Very nice. I think they did a pretty good job with that. What else do we have access to? Ah, we need more metal. We gotta get any and everybody who may be free. Although, we're starting to get less and less of that gathering scrap. Ah, food we got a lot of. We will try to build that granary then. Because food will go bad if we don't store it. I'm going to try to put it near the camp somewhere so they don't have to walk so far. That's a good central location. Food, everybody's going to need that. So putting it near our headquarters building and expedition building are, are important. Now, the expedition building and this big workshop, I think, are something that we can build later on. But in this map scenario, we just started with them. So it's something we could do pretty much in any mission, I believe. Good. Food storage has been expanded. Love to see it. Although I hate to see our supplies go. You can establish new decrees. New decrees, huh? Well, we could go with overloaded. Uh, people can carry three more, but happiness will be reduced by ten. We're going to do that. we got to get things done quickly. Next, we're going to go for hunting tactics and smart farming, if we can. We can produce more food with less people. Because we're going to have more people in the camp. So that'll be just fine. Now, I'd also argue that it's a good idea in this game, because there is a, a fail condition. If we do not build the bridge and send out our expedition in six days, we're going to fail. So I would recommend don't doing that don't complete that goal don't send your expedition until like the very last uh, couple of days so that way you get more time to build up all of your camp and get more survivors and do all the things you need to i think you're going to fare much better that way all right the windmills are bringing in some good water dutch breathing intensifies granaries looking good still want more materials though we need uh, more wood we can get a lumberjack up uh, shortly we get a few more people on wood collection. I would say that a nice thing in this game would be a hotkey. I'm not sure if there's a hotkey or not, but it would be nice to hit a hotkey to be able to see where all the resource piles are. So that way there could be like a little thing that pops up above them to increase, decrease, or at once see who's working where. Now we can see two out of six here currently, but I'm, you know, what if, what if I didn't know what they were gathering? In some cases it could be chemicals. In some cases, it could be parts. In most cases, it's probably going to be metal. Still don't see anybody arriving yet. I would like to do more work. I need more people to do it, though, but it could be something that opens up after we send that first expedition. But if we're going to build the bridge, we're going to need quite a bit of materials. So we do need the lumberjack up, rather the scrapper up, in order to get those parts that we need. Of course, there could be parts around. Some boxes are literally labeled with parts with white text on them, too. Someone is standing at the gate. Well, there we go. Finally, some new survivors. Excellent. So yeah, sometimes these containers will be marked with parts, but I think the um, scrappers are able to gather those faster. Wow, look at that. Five strangers. Fantastic. Welcome aboard. Good to have you all. And wow, we almost hit our max again, so let's go ahead and build more tents. No, we can't. Let's go ahead and get them onto wood gathering right away. And there's some more scrap there, too. All right, let's speed up time, y'all. Let's speed up time. Look at that. People speeding along. Fantastic. Love to see it. Now, eventually, we're going to need 50 wood to build the scaffolding there. This is something that during our live stream was not really visible or something that we even came across, unless they put some symbol there. There was a lot of confusion. So, luckily, a little bit of the quote unquote beta testing that we did to find out what was going on helps to make a better game. That's good. Well, let's build another small tent. We're just going to have more people. And let's also do a scrap collector next. And I do want to store water, but that will probably take some of our resources. Where is a water depot? We could build a greenhouse. That might be a better way to use that water. So let's go with that. Water will be automatically used by the greenhouse. And I'm glad we have a few workers there. Food's good, water's good. Yeah, so the greenhouses, we're going to convert water, which we have a lot of, to food, which we don't have a lot of. Ah, and there's some of our chemicals in the cistern there. So that's good. Another one there. 
Oh yeah. All right. Come on, I want uh, I want some more grab collectors, please. <laughs> you click on anybody. You can establish music That's kind of cool. You can actually see their happiness, their food and water, uh, their name. I like that. Okay, we're going to put two people in the tent. We can now do a new decree. We're going to go with hunting tactics first and then move our way to smart farming. And the farming, I want to be able to just use the water because we're producing a lot of it. And then if we're needing more water, then we'll just switch to hunting so that way uh, we don't use as much water. There are policies to reduce the amount of water that our people drink too, so if we need water, we can enact that policy a little bit later. But of course, the more farmers that we put in the greenhouse, the more water I believe that it'll consume, I believe. But I think it's four food per 10 water per hour per person, I think. So that thing could be gobbling up like 50 water per day. And each of our windmills are producing quite a bit too. All right, we need more scrape. let's go. I need more wood piles to be depleted. That's what I need. And we'll finally get to our first goal of building that scrap collector. And the scrap collector can employ up to seven people. So that's quite a large and serious building. That's going to take a lot of workforce. So that's why I was kind of waiting for survivors. Uh, and we want even more now, honestly. Oh, we got somebody who died. He ran out of food, even though we have 479. That's a shame little pathing issue then I've noticed that more and more in games recently where just people uh, they they'll be hungry and there is food and some games they just kind of need to buff that out where it's like they're hungry there is food but they just don't go to where uh, they need to to get the food of course we had our little granary there and I think they can also go to the Omni Science building but I think if they are hungry they should go far before they are hungry before they get food uh, that body, I think, will disappear over time. I don't think we have to bury them. But there, that's what happens when there is a death. All right, can we build our scrap collector? Oh, finally, beautiful. Let's build that building right away. I want to try to build it somewhere more centralized. There we go. So this will help them to get across the bridge easily. A terrible mess. Uh, let's see, better cleaning tools. Food for tidying up. It'll take food and water, but raise happiness. Let's just give everybody a little little extra snack to clean up. We got plenty of food and water. We're good. <laughs> wow, we've got like 425 food and 600 water. That's the most I've ever had. That's an abundance of food and water. And yet still deaths. Ah, well, it happens. Okay, so the next goal will try to be to get that building constructed. And then get people who are here working on that instead. So we've got six here. And then the people on the wood pile, we'll get them to work in the farm, and then we'll redistribute a few jobs and build that next building, which is the lumberjack, which should bring in tons of wood for us. And that's going to be the last thing to hold us back before we start getting fuel. We can go on one of the expeditions and come back successfully before uh, we kind of can't do anything more until we build the scaffolding. So we can still do the expedition without having to build the scaffolding. So just build the bridge and send the expedition. We don't have to worry about the oil just yet. We can escape with one vehicle. And I really want to show the combat. Now, I think there's enough con uh, content here, too, where I can show multiple episodes on just a prologue. So if you want to see a full playthrough of the prologue and the full game when it comes out in two months, again, smash the like button. Since there is so many different games to play, I want to know which ones you guys are the most interested in so I can put more time into that. So if this is something you're liking, post-apocalyptic survival city builders, then just be adamant down below in that comment section. Tell me you can't live without it or tell me some of the flavors, sizes from... What is it? Cold stone? Need it? Gotta have it? Can't live without it? Uh, sold my house for it? You know? <laughs> that, kind of, <laughs> that kind of thing. So then I'll know. Because, you know, I certainly like to make videos that you like to watch. Let's go ahead and assign a few people now to the scrapper. So the scrapper, we can turn on and off certain things that they gather. We can turn on and off metal, parts, and chemicals. And so if we have more than enough of one thing, we can turn off the other ones. Now these guys can also gather from these piles. And they can also gather from vehicles, so they'll go get everything. Additionally, we can have seven people working here and also have ten people working on that metal pile. So if you had 17 people free and wanted to go gather metal, you could just, like, speed run it really quickly. All right. What does the bridge need? 25 parts as well? 
So we're, we're not too far away on some of that stuff. All right, a new decree. Let's go ahead and go with the uh, reuse of water. It'll reduce water consumption by 5%. And then we'll do sand bathing, where I guess they go roll around in the sand to clean themselves. Don't hit a scorpion. All right, let's get a few more people assigned to that. Food, I think we're good on. I've been monitoring it. We've been holding around 400, almost 500 food, so pretty proud about that. I'm going to go ahead and reduce our building force a little bit. We're not building as much now, but we do want to get a few more things to build with. Looks like we're pretty much full on metal. Let's go ahead and reduce that. Let's keep chemicals and parts coming in. Metal we'll hold off on because we... If we get too much, we can store it temporarily, but then it will disappear. So you got about maybe till the end of the day before it'll disappear. There's our parts. There's what I was talking about. The giant container with parts written on top of it. You may have seen that. Some people probably timestamp that too. So good eye if you were able to find that one and see it on the map. So yeah, people are hungry. They're returning from work. And then they should be able to go right over to the granary and have a little snack. And or sometimes they can go to the Omni Science building and grab some stuff too. It might even be stored up at the campfire. Not entirely sure, but... Okay, so now we're going to hold on to some supply for a little while. Oh, well, now we have too much metal. All right, I'm going to build the metal depot because I really don't want... Well, actually, wait a minute. Can we build this yet? Now we're still short on wood. So instead of that, let's do this. We'll build the lumberjack up here. There we go. So never mind. No need to store. We'll just go ahead and spend and invest. So some of our materials now going towards that. Very nice. Home Depot song kicking up again. We're about ready here. Now we can build a gate to defend the people. We don't have to do that just yet in this mission. I've not seen any sort of attacks or whatnot. And it's kind of a, you know, a little more important to build the bridge. Otherwise it's like... The scouts that we're looking for in this storyline are, are gone forever. If we don't do that within time so more resource bots being depleted let's have our people gather just parts now no need for chemicals look at that they're carrying 55 gallon drums on their back with the chemicals not bad we don't need it at the moment but of course if it's in our base we can just gather it whenever. It's kind of already in storage, technically. We just need to go pick it up. Let's assign a few people to go get uh, some trees cut down. And what was our numbers we needed? Oh, we have a lot of parts. All right, let's switch to everything again. We're about to invest some. All right, so let's go ahead and get people off this. and quick. Let's quickly do a speed run of wood. Is there any wood piles? Actually, I would like to assign a few more people to food. We'll slow down on that metal gathering. That's metal there. See a wood pile there in the back. So let's go without so we can quickly st uh, build the bridge. We need 250, 225. Boom, build that bridge. All right, a new decree. Go ahead and make sure we don't use any water. Well... Reduces it by 10%. I don't know if that's total. I don't know if it's 5 and then 10, so thus we get a 15% less water consumption, or if it's 10 in total. And I think it's 10 in total. But less water used for luxuries like bathing is good. Now that means we can make more food and possibly trade with the traders. All right, we've got one person working on building. I'm going to go ahead and try to get... One person on the lumberjack, one person on the... Oh, there's somebody at the gates. Oh. Hey, welcome aboard. Seven strangers. Let's go. Someone is standing at the gate. Four? Wow. All right. Just suddenly, seven and then six showing up. Wow. Out of nowhere. All right, let's pause because we're going to have to... Um, we're going to have a few problems here. So now we can build some nicer homes, too. We can build the small house for our people, but very lavish. Um, it takes a lot of materials. So we're going to try to build some more tents. I'll see if I can build, like, three of those. Actually, I think 
I think we could build a few more. But this is good. All these helping hands now we can put towards the farming and the logging and everything else. Funny that they show up at nighttime, isn't it? After all the work is over. Hmm. Interesting. People are stealing our food rations. Oh, boy. Um, punish the thieves. We'll gain food. Be understanding. Or ignore the problem. Or cannibalism. Eat the thieves. Wow. Holy hell. Um, let's see. Let's let's be... I, we understand. It's, it's okay. We'll, yeah. It's fine. You guys are hungry. You don't know how it works here. Stealing is wrong. It's okay. It's your first day. All right. Let's get a few more people on construction. And actually, I think what we can now do is try to prepare our... If we're building the bridge... Got a few people on that construction. That's assigned, I think, by this building here. We can also start building some vehicles. So we can start with our scout or an Avenger. So if we just get to... Now, the problem with this, too, is that they'll consume more fuel. The Avenger will consume 10 fuel per 100 kilometers, and the scout will consume 5. So for our first mission, I think we'll send the scout, and then we'll try to build an Avenger because we're going to need more fuel for that. So first we're going to scout it out, and then we're going to start building our scaffolding. But again, we have four days. We have four days to take care of everything, so we're good. The bridge will be built in time. I think we can ignore chemicals again. And parts. We just want to get metal up. So now we have too much wood again. I think what we'll try to do is maybe build a hunter's hut. I mean, we do have that resource there, and I think we should take care of that. Or use it. So let's go ahead and farm and hunt. So we got meat and good good veggies coming in. Who knows? Taters. Maybe Matt Damon's working here. You know? Loves them taters, and he loves Mars, doesn't he? I'll right, we'll go ahead and scale back on the uh, wood gathering a little bit. And go more towards that metal. And I think we want to do... You can establish new decree. Oh, new decrees. Wonderful. Let's quickly take a peek at that. We'll go with the smart farming now. Beautiful. That's a good one. And yeah, we could build a gate. I'm sure everybody would like to see that. But, uh, wait a minute. We could save those materials for our vehicle. Let's build a scout. For our first little run. We're going to have to assign somebody there to work on building a vehicle. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can pull some people off of some other jobs. We'll go down to two at the construction yard and get two people to make a scout. All right, we're about to see some combat, which is really cool in this game. We're going to be able to send out some scouts. Now that the bridge is done, by the way, hey, hey, and we got people already going to the other side to grab metal. There's already food there, so we got emergency food back up, more wood, more parts, more stuff over there, lots more parts. There's another one there marked as parts. We're gonna have to build a wood storage, aren't we? It's gonna be too much. I don't wanna I don't wanna throw it away. Let's build it there. Alright, cool. Wow, lots of wood. Holy crap. Let's hold off on that. But we gotta get this vehicle done. So yeah, some of the wood gets cut off there, but that's okay. We've got plenty of uh, we got plenty of wood now. I'm gonna cut down the number of people cutting down trees. We get a few more people making our first vehicle. We're gonna get a hunter. Be able to start hunting those deer. And we're gonna only get more people coming into the camp, so more water would be necessary. Either for food or for drinking water. Someone is standing at the gate. Oh, wow. It's like I knew it was going to happen. Uh, metal is rusted too much. Uh, let's see. Wrap for parts. Ooh. We could, um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We can actually take 60 metal and turn that into 10 parts. Cool. We'll convert. All right, more people at the gate. Good. 
four people. Welcome aboard. And then we're just going to keep putting them into food production. And we will need people as drivers for our expeditions. So these are people who will then go out on expeditions for us. So it seems like we have too many people, but now they're just going to be drivers for our scouting expeditions. And soon we'll get into some combat. All right, I'm going to make the vehicles and let's go out on an expedition. Let's go. Camp over on the right side. We have ourselves a scout that we're going to send on the mission. Essentially, we just need to avoid enemy contact. So we're going to go ahead and go to the unknown place. Once our scout unit reaches that, we should be able to then well, find multiple locations on the map and start breaking down where those scouts went with a lot of our fuel. So they'll be there in just a couple of hours. Now, they should encounter a fight on the way, and then we'll have a mini game, which is pretty sweet. So that should be uh, quite cool. All right, ooh, we got to build some more houses. Let's do that while we wait. Always people coming in. And build some more houses here. Oh, the hunting tent kind of looks a little bit like yes, the uh, destination. actual houses. Hey, time to fight. Last sign of the scouts. Our expedition detected hostile activity. Prepare for battle. Hell yeah. All right. So, basically... Hell yeah, that music, brother. We got ourselves multiple units that we can have during the fight that are ours. Each one of the skulls in the upper left corner is the enemy, like, throwing reinforcements at us. And we're able to pretty much move around to where we can avoid their shots. Now, our scouts are very nimble, very fast. They have a sniper rifle. We should be able to kill some enemy units. But we're not necessarily going to win the fight. We're just going to basically continue to dodge their attacks and shoot back at them. There is, of course, auto fire over here on the right side. Yep. So we'll continue to maneuver. Enemy will just keep getting reinforcements. Eventually, ooh, nice kill. Eventually, <clears throat> we'll have multiple vehicles with us. So we'll have like one or two scouts. Well, we have one now, but one or two more scouts. So we'll maybe have like three scouts. And we can also have some like uh, light units too that are a little more heavily armored than the scout, which is the lightest with just basically, you know, a motorbike with like a wheelbarrow on the side of it. Now they haven't touched us once. We've got about 30 health. We're trying to avoid their uh, possible rams and we're trying to shoot them as much as possible now the more we shoot them the less they can shoot back right with their vehicles destroyed taking a little bit of a hit there but we're gonna keep moving if we can didn't let us move up that way more enemy vehicles out here means that it's gonna be harder for us to maneuver but we made it so at this point, it's like, oh no, we're completely overwhelmed, we're gonna die, no! But no, it's a victory. <laughs> yeah, we won. So the goal here is to basically just stay away from enemy forces and eventually get enough uh, forward momentum to be able to win. So uh, just getting to our next destination is all we needed for the big dub. So, yeah, a few enemy units destroyed. I don't think there's any XP or anything here for these units, but it would be kind of cool. We're too late. The savages have taken care of the wrecks, but we may be able to find something useful and uh, further our tracks. So we have food and some things to trade with the trader and then we can also see how much uh, things our expedition has, right? So yeah, we can continue on going um, and we can prepare an expedition but we have to send out a new one. So each time we have to go out from our camp, we can't go from one to two and two to three. So it's a little more tricky than you'd think. So let's send our expedition back, RTB. And now we have some new goals. Now our new goals are to reach tech level 2 to build a small workshop which will let us have things like, for example, a nitrous oxide and maybe like uh, repair kits. We can also build a kitchen and send another expedition. So we're going to prepare for that. Now we can get ready for all of the uh, fuel. We're going to need a lot of fuel for these expeditions. We're down to uh, just a little bit less than we were at before from that little journey. So we just need about 50 wood in order to go out on that expedition. So. Let's go ahead and get cranking on bringing people in. And bringing wood in as well. And we got to get a few more people housed. Got uh, two people there in the camp there. So now we have a, about 12 days to do this. So we have to research or reach level 2. So 250 wood, 250 steel, and 150 food. We have to build ourselves a kitchen, a workshop, and then send out another expedition. So... Uh, building the kitchen and the, and the small workshop should be pretty easy, but we need to reach level 2 before we do that. And then the other expedition, we can wait 
until we've got ourselves some scaffolding to possibly get some more fuel out of uh, wherever it is on this giant ship. So we got options. Now, uh, yeah, the expedition came back, so now we can get those people working on something else. Like, for example, building. And we should have some more homes built here shortly. More scrap metal coming in, more wood coming in. Good stuff. We'll build that scaffolding too. And we're going to need a lot more people to do all these jobs. You can establish new decree. Ah, we can establish Resources a new decree. Spot depleted. Well, let's go ahead and get people to carry even more stuff. It'll be an uh, unpopular decision. Oh, we already uh, went down that line, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we did. Okay, it was like blacked out for a second, but now we're good. Punishment ring, graveyard, food rationing management, sand bathing. Sometimes it seems like they uh, disappear. Hmm. Solves the negative effects of social events. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. So now we just need to gather things until we reach level two. Oop. Looks like we got tons of metal, but not a lot of wood. And we would certainly like to build ourselves another metal depot, but that's going to take a little bit more wood than what we've got. And we don't want to have too much metal. Oh. Well, there's the punishment ring. Well, that's nice. Right up over the fire like that. Cool. I guess. All right, we need a little bit, a little bit more wood. Maybe there's some more piles on this side. I see more metal. And eventually the lumberjacks can come over to this side. It's going to be slower, of course, because they have to walk. But that should be just fine. All right, we have our next order of business. That's what we're going to do. And that is all for now for our first look at Post Apo Builder, a more complete version of the playtest. There'll be more episodes of this one on the channel, so make sure you hit that like button. Thank you very much for subscribing, and thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And let me know how excited you are for episode two, because we got a lot more to cover in this one, and it's certainly one I want to do a full playthrough on when it releases sometime in a few months. Thanks again for watching. Take care, and we'll see you soon.